So Russ, All right, we're ready. We're ready. We're ready to begin, I guess. Um, Jim, would you uh, would you put up the? Um... There you go. Welcome everybody. This is the regular meeting for March twenty second, twenty twenty two, of the Roxbury Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission. We'll start with a call to order. Uh, seating of the members. Who's here? Rob Horgan. Andy Engel. John Smolliger. Sierra Gordon. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead, Sue. Sue Fitch. Lenora Palatnik. Sierra. Hi. Sierra Gorglione. Anybody else? And I'm Russ uh, Richard Pratt. I'm with Patrick Brew. Sorry. <laughs> I'm working on the uh, Zoom here. Right, but you're not a member of the commission. I am not. <laughs> right, right. So Sorry. we're just calling to order members of the commission. I'm okay. Russ Dorenzo. I chair the commission. We do have a quorum. We have a full quorum of the five regular members. Uh, I will see either Sierra or Lenora as needed as we go on if one of the members have to um, step down. I know, John, you have to step down on a uh, new business item, right? Yeah, for Jamie. Okay. Yeah. All right. Communications with the public. Anybody from the public have anything they want to communicate to the commission? Uh, not hearing any. We'll move on to approval of the minutes. Regular meeting, February 20, 22nd. 2022. Uh, do we have um, any comments on those minutes? Move to approve. From it. All right, Andy made a move to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll abstain, Russ. Okay. I'll, ab I'll abstain also, Russ. Okay. Sorry, Russ, who made that motion or who seconded it? And, Andy and then John, I believe. John, okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. And then Rob and Sue abstained. Sue abstained. Okay, yeah. got it. Thank yeah. you. Hi, Karen. Hey, how are you? Good, good to hear you. <laughs> oh, same here. Yeah. Okay, and then approval of the special meeting minutes from February 23rd, 2022. Somebody remind me, why do we have a special meeting? For your lawsuit. Oh, yes, where we went into executive session and then came out. So I'll look for a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 I'll, I'll abstain, Russ. Okay, John, I'll abstain. Okay. I'll abstain too, Russ. Okay. Wetland Enforcement Officer Report. John, are you here? Mr. Cody? I guess he's not here. I'm going to text him because he really needs to be here. Maybe he forgot. Karen, where's the chairman's report? Is that at the end of the meeting? Um, no, Russ, it is um, right after John's report. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. You joining? Okay. Okay, chairman's report. That we added this on just in the so I could communicate with the commission about any new uh, regulations or new things that are happening in the wetlands world, which I kind of keep in touch with, with court cases and, and, and with the state. Everybody should know that there is a new wetland trainings uh, course available, and that's available to anybody for free. 
before they would only allow one person per town for free and then we had to pay for others. And this is new. So I, I recommend if you have the time, what you would do is Google CT Deep, D-E-E-P. When you get to their web page, just put inland wetlands in the search and that brings you to the inland wetlands web page and the training is right there. You click and you take the training and then if you um, pass, which isn't hard, uh, but it's a good course. I, I did it again just to refresh myself. I know the legislature is talking about requiring four hours of training every year for commissions, all zoning. Like they don't put enough on volunteers that we can't even get people to volunteer. And those people who sit in their high horses at the state level uh, have nothing but more ideas to make it harder. It's the same for the fire department and the ambulance people. It's getting too hard. So state needs to stop. That's my political opinion anyway. So we'll move on to old business. Uh, 308 South Berry Road, single family dwelling with detached garage and shed. I believe, Andy, you were going to go out and look at this. Yep, I went and took a look at it a couple of weeks ago. Um, so what do you think? Um, where they have the house proposed seems to make a lot of sense to me. Um, it's relatively close to the uh, water course there, but the only other option is to go further uphill and the further uphill you go, the more likely you are to create erosion and problems like that. So, um, as long as, um, they're careful about not fertilizing the lawn on that lower flat section, I don't really see a problem. And it is in our regulations where you can't do that within 50 feet, 100 feet of a wetland. So Right, which would be pretty much the whole envelope uh, between the house and the, uh, uh, and the stream. Anybody have any comments, questions? I, I took a quick look at it, Russ, and I agree with Andy. Okay. Any other questions? Having none, I, I look for a motion to approve this as a regulated activity with the condition that there is no fertilizer used within uh, on the lawn, unless it's an organic fertilizer. Even that thrust can create, you know, can add too much nitrogen. If end up yeah, I, 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 I agree. Okay, I'm trying to help. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really fertilize my lawn, so... No. Um, so I'll look for a motion to approve this as a regulated activity with the condition that no fertilizers used on a lawn or pesticides, which, so includes, which includes herbicides. That's mm -hmm. not a motion. I'm looking for you to give it. Uh, okay. Well, I would motion that we approve this as a regulated activity with the condition that uh, no fertilizers, uh, herbicides, or pesticides be used on the lawn. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, it passes. Thank you. Next. Stone Lead Sam, LLC, Painter Hill Road, Map 19, Lot 30, Single Family Dwelling. You want to bring that up, Jimmy? <clears throat> Paul Shemansky is the engineer on this. We met Paul Sierra, and I met Paul. Um, this is on Painter Hill before the road starts going up, so across from the old Manor, old Lowe's houses. Um, it looks worse than it is. <laughs> Then it, so what's happening here? If you want to go up, Jim, let's mm -hmm. start up where the house is. Apparently, the owner is very into trees and has tagged all the trees. Wants to save as many trees as he can. I don't have a problem with the house. It's up <clears> on top of the hill in a flat area. 
um, no, no issues there. As you walk down the driveway, right where that blue line is, water seeps out of the ground, creating uh, that, that big wetland there. Water seeps out of the ground, so it's not like a swamp. It, it's really water seeping, out, groundwater seeping out of the ground at that elevation, making the soils wet. Um, making it wetlands. And as you could see, if you go down, Jim, <clears throat> and over, yeah, there you go. There's many wetland crossings, seven, seven to be complete. These crossings are very small. You could step right over them where water's running off, but definitely defined as an in intermittent stream which has to have stormwater running in it longer than any stormwater duration event, which it did, has to have hydrophytic uh, vegetation, that's wetland vegetation, which we couldn't tell. And it has to have uh, scour, which, it did, which all of them did. But they're all one foot, two foot. We went over each crossing with the size of the pipes. They're, ranging from 18 inch to 24 inch made the, made sure on the plans that they're going to going to be dug in so that uh that there's substrate in them and if you go down the driveway jim you see another big wetland down there right and one of those uh, intermittent streams goes into that, but th that's the same situation. Groundwater coming out onto the surface, not a swamp. It's a wood, it's called really a, a wooded wetland. Um, and the driveway comes around that and then goes down. I, I didn't have any problem with the sneak this or, or the, the, the drainage plan. I did have a problem on the bottom. I thought that there should be a curtain drain along the road. Um, if not, I asked how water is going to be prevented from getting in the road and the road already has some water coming down it. Um, Paul did submit today new uh, new plan in that area, which I reviewed and I have no issue with. It, it's exactly as we talked about. As you can see, is a stormwater infiltration basin, which is little bigger than it needs to be, um, shows stockpile locations. I asked them to take down trees near where there's a telephone pole. Uh, again, the owner's really big in the trees, didn't want to take. It wants to take down as little trees as, as they can, if he and she can. Uh, but there's a couple of trees that aren't in good shape. And when they come down, they're mm -hmm. taking out that telephone pole that's right there. And they agreed to that. Which, which makes Patrick happy. Um, Sierra, do you have any comment? Um, not really. I mean, it was a very well thought out plan, I thought. Um, very little wetlands, um, very minor besides um, where the proposed curtain is. Um, but yeah, I, I thought, you know, the placement of the driveway was, um, was great. And yeah, I don't really have any much to add. All right. Thank you. That That's Jack in the background, <laughs> in case anybody wants to know. He's full of fire. <laughs> so, um, fire is a good way to explain yeah, it. <laughs> full of fire, that kid. Um, so all in all, are there any questions? Did anybody else go look at this? Uh, or, Russ, I, I just did a you know, quick drive by. I started walking up the hill. I, I saw what you meant about the, the streams and I didn't have a lot of time to go all the way up. And I agree with that. But one, one question for Paul though. Um, Paul, when this was presented last week uh, or last month, you know, I said it's a guest house for the other, the adjacent property. Why, why the driveway? Why not co just come in from the other side of the other property adjacent to it? Good question. 
but it's two parcels, but I'll let Paul answer. And just so everybody knows, the adjacent parcel is the old Ginsburg's property, which comes off a good hill road. So if you're heading towards the transfer station, it's one of those driveways going up 317 on the left hand side. We did go in that way because they're proposing. We did approve a pond uh, clean out there last month. Karen says we approved it. I believe her, but I don't I don't remember. But we looked at it, Sierra and I and Paul, and we didn't have a problem with that. And then we went up to the top and what used to be tennis courts, a big house has all been demolished and they're going to build a new house there. And what Paul explained to me was that was going to be the guest house. And this is the main house. And they are two separate parcels. But I'll let Paul, if I'm wrong, Paul, let me know. Uh, good evening, everyone. For the record, Paul Szymanski. Um, <clears throat> they, it's flip-flop for us. They're, they're going to keep their primary residence um, up above. They're, they're going to locate it in a more central portion of the adjacent property. Um, so they just want to have privacy uh, from from this separate residence. And uh, that's basically the reason. And technically in Roxbury, we can't share driveways. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, John. Yep. Thanks. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I got a couple. Um, Good. One is, is there, you know, when, when you start, Paul, when you start cutting a driveway into the hillside like this, Typically, you're going to encounter, you know, I've already heard there's high groundwater. So probably there's going to be like uphill drains along the driveway, curtain drains. Yeah, we're showing uh, in all the cut situations, we're showing curtain drains on the upgradient side. And then those discharge either to uh, the level spreader that we're showing or the rain guards. Okay, so if... I guess my question is, if you cut off the water from the wetlands, what happens to the wetlands? So where we're crossing, so when, where we're between the two wetland systems, we're not in a cut situation. Um, the, the areas that were in the excavation is downgrading of the wetland systems. So where we're either upgrading of the wetlands or between the two wetland systems, we don't have cut situations. So we don't have the curtain trains. Rob, that's a great question. And Sierra and I asked it when we were on the site. And then he showed us, you know, the, the water coming out of the ground is straight up. And I did ask, and he did show me how he made engineering plans so that didn't happen. So that water would go where it's going now, okay. based on the grade that's there now, and the grade that'll be there after the driveways in. That was a good question. I, I walked that uh, site today, and uh, there's still water coming out of the ground in a couple of places. It would it always been, be. <laughs> yeah, may have been the longest driveway I've ever walked for the Wetlands Commission. <laughs> what is it? A, a, a half mile? Paul? Uh, about 3,500 3, feet. Yeah, a little more. Almost than. a yep. mile. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, three quarters. Yeah. So, so Paul, my question, though, is that area that's above the larger wetland, where it traverses above, yeah, across the, uh, you know, the, the larger wetland? Mm -hmm. Up top? Up yeah. top, Rob? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was the area I was, that I was questioning. <clears throat> yeah, we're in a slight uh, fill situation to the right of the septic and uh, two to th four feet of fill down gradient of the septic. So, so we're not gonna be intercepting any groundwater in those areas. Okay, okay. Yep. We, we just have a stone swale on the side to capture any concentrated runoff. Um, mm -hmm. And then we kept that about 150 feet away from the wetlands to a level spreader. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Any other questions? Does the commission feel this is either a significant activity? It is seven crossings, but the, as, as I guess one, two, three, four of us saw, it, those aren't major stream crossings. But I need to ask that question, or do we feel public hearing should be held in the public's interest? 
I don't see any need for a public hearing. This is yeah, I don't either, Russ. Okay. Sierra, you were out there. No, I don't think so. Okay. I, Rob? I, I thought they were minor. Well, I, I didn't walk the site. I mean, looking at the map, it looks like a lot's going on, but I, you know, I'll take your your guys' words for it because you, you saw it. So I'll go along with with your input on that. Okay. Sue, any comment? Well, no? that's, I mean, kind of what Rob was saying. Um, I, I'm not familiar with the site, but looking at the map, I would almost say, especially knowing this isn't a primary residence, um, the issue of having this place um, further down. I mean, why the length of the driveway and why all the crossings, but not having walked the site, I mean, you guys are, are saying that you don't see that significant, but that would be my question. Well, if you move the map down, uh, Jimmy, you could see it's the best place. I think in a lot opinion. of the reason why he was, you know, he meandered the driveway around a lot was because he didn't want to cut down big groups of older trees. I, I think that's what Paul was telling us. I think that was what Yeah, that's said. that's correct, Sierra. And also, if we were to have it down closer to the roadway, um, we would be within the open review area for the houses, the house. And as you noted on the last application, we want to stay as far as we can from the actual livable area outside of that. So everything on the lower two thirds of the property is fully upland review area, except for a tiny area where that topsoil stockpile is halfway up. So by placing the house up above, although we have those crossings, um, we, we have all the development area uh, totally outside of the upland review area. <clears throat> yeah, one thing I noted too, was that although there's a, a lot of land that's marked as wetland here, it's it's I think wetland soils. I don't. It sure didn't That's look correct. like there was an active um, ecosystem going on there. Yeah, I agree. So I'll look for a motion. <coughs> Since Sierra walked it um, with John, you want to? No, you walked it, Rob. You want to step down? It'd be better to have a person. Who walked it? Yes, I saw it down. Okay, I so um, I'll put Sierra on um, for Rob Horgan for this application. So Sierra, you're a voting member on this. So yeah, I'll look for a motion. Motion to approve. As a regulated activity? Yes, sorry. Yep, no, that's okay. Motion to approve is a regulated activity. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Thank you for your time, everyone. Have a great evening. All right, hey, Paul. Paul. Hey, Paul, Take the POM was approved last meeting, right? Yep, that's correct. Yep. Okay. All right. Karen's Karen's on it. I'm losing my head. So yeah, it was just subject to the site walk, I believe. Oh, I see. So. All right. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Well, on that site walk, Sierra and I had no issues, so you're good to go. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great evening, everyone. Okay, Patrick <laughs> Bruce, 67 Mallory Road, single family dwelling. This is next to Wayne Pascura's house. Um, I think Patrick submitted an application couple months ago, but we couldn't get the engineering that we needed to approve it. So we withdrew it. Correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick. Um, yep, and that's here correct. it is, here it then, is yeah. a new application. So Sierra and I, and, and Patrick, you, do you have a family? Are you moving here with your family or? Yep. I have a family. And I think uh, last meeting you wanted the engineer present. Yeah. Well, welcome. We want Thank families. You. That's something we're very excited about because we've had a lot of families, young families moving into town, even though the prediction was that nobody would move here. It's too expensive, but apparently some people were finding a way. So that's good. Uh, we need more kids and uh, we got to keep it going. So, Patrick, I walked this once, had no issues other than I needed a drainage system 
that would work for your own good. And Sierra walked it with me. And it is a beautiful uh, parcel, I must say. So is Curtis here? Yep, we uh, got Curtis Mark. Uh, Russ, I'm here. Uh, Mark Reitman, after like an engineer with Smith & Company. I'm here with Pat. Okay, so Jim, if you could focus in on the Mallory Road part of it. This guy's good. Did we give you a raise, Jim? <laughs> if not, I think we should. But anyway, um, here's the new plan, which shows a lot more detail than, than before. And my concern was there is a swale there now on the upside, right, right by the, where the stream is. You see that? Can everybody see the stream? It's the red line, really. Part of the red line. There's a swale there that had become overgrown, filled in, wasn't going to work. And on the where it meets Mallory, there was a hole there. They must have dug for uh, electrical. Okay, John Cody. No, John Cody just texted uh, me. Yeah. Let me Yes, Rose, John Cody. I'm sorry. All right. Now, don't be sorry. You're here. We, we're, we're good. Yeah. We're all good. So on the Mallory Road, I was worried about water coming into the road. How are we going to handle water? So, Mark, um, the rest of it going up, I mean, where the house is going is flat. And Sierra made the good comment that where do you find flat land on top of a hill in Roxbury? Well, apparently Patrick found flat land because where the house is going and it's a large field, there's no issues whatsoever. Um, it's, the, it. it's, it's the driveway before it cuts off. So, Mark, you want to explain to the commission what you engineered? Yeah, I'd be happy to walk it through you. Um, I think mainly, uh, like you said, Russ, um, this, this driveway was constructed quite a long time ago. Um, and was about then to gain access to that open field in the back. Um, as you had noted, uh, over time, that uh, swale on the east side of that driveway then runs parallel to the stone wall, particularly in the uh, near station uh, 150 or so, that section of the swale got kind of filled in and forced all the water coming down that, that side of the east side of that driveway out into the uh, driveway itself causing uh, quite a bit of a mess once Patrick started uh, gaining access to the property and uh, kind of escalated the other issues um, that you saw out there. Um, so, you know, and Patrick had met with you guys back in the fall, we've gone out there and looked at it. So to kind of alleviate that issue um, was to reconstruct that swale on the east side of that driveway, kind of get that reestablished um, and then the other function of that was having the swale be lined with some sort of uh, turf reinforcement mats uh, and in addition with uh, stone check dams at 50 foot intervals just to kind of break that flow so it doesn't get too concentrated flow um, just so that we can regulate that water um, as it's coming down the hill on that east side and then eventually <clears throat> end up going this is, you know going toward the existing brook to the east of the property on the Rockbury Land Trust where water was originally going um, back in time before the swale got filled in. So we were trying we, so basically to reestablish that swale so that we can maintain so that it would be maintained and better regulated and controlled so that we can address that water. All right, I have a question. Right where you show um, in the beginning about 40, 50 feet up, it's a quagmire. It's all muddy. It's wet there. Yeah, oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So um, that part, a lot of that water that was coming down that hill because the swale was being cut off and plus the fact that the original electrical conduits that were put in that drive along that driveway years ago was never really capped off or extended above grade. So 
those conduits, unfortunately, acted as a um, sort of mini drainage piping, which had allowed all that water to get short circuited and brought down to the hill, bottom of the hill there um, by Mallory Road. Um, I do know that the town went in there um, oh, some, a couple months ago to kind of put a cutoff swale in there to try to alleviate that water leach, you know, leakage out uh, to uh, Mallory Road. So um, we're gonna, the plan is now is to reconstruct that first uh, 305 feet or so to get that road base, driveway base back established, um, pave the first 45 feet or so for the, so we have a good solid entrance off of Mallory Road. And then- All right. uh, is, this, is the out. stream on here? I, I can't see the stream. The stream is actually, Further. Here and then it goes up that way. Okay. Yeah, if you look. All right. If you look where it says so Mallory it's really Road, the bottom of the driveway that you come close. Yeah, I mean the yeah. property. Yeah, it's way east of us. And you don't think that water in the uh, you know couple hundred feet up is groundwater infiltrating, and you you don't need a curtain drain there. Or well, I mean, to... I think mainly because there's no swale in that area near right. 150. Um, so what's happening? All the water that was flowing, that's flowing along that whatever's left of the swale on that east side of the driveway is being forced out into the field near Station 150, which was compounding the situation even more. Okay. So now with we once we regrade and establish that swale back, we're not going to get that water coming back out um, towards the driveway and ultimately down at Mall Mallory Road. Okay. Olivia, are, are you on? Are, are you here? You're blocked. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. I'm oh, with my dad. Okay. That's okay. I just need to note for the record, Karen, that Olivia joined. So so we have a full full stack tonight. Okay, got it. Thank but, you. But I need to show what members are here and what members aren't. So mm -hmm. So I, I see the top of her head. So I figured it wasn't a pony dog. There, so. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry, Mark. Um, anybody so, else have questions? Sierra yeah, was on this with me. If Sierra, you had any concerns? No, no there's okay. not anything besides what you said. Russ, I have a couple questions. Go ahead, Rob. So I, I do remember this application and I think, uh, you know, so what's happening with the water that's coming down the driveway? It goes into that concrete level spreader, Mark? Yeah, so, so that water, so the, you're talking about, the, so you got the swale that's directing along the east side of the driveway that's going to, um, in, you know, just east, uh, probably about station 125. We have that concrete spreader so that we can spread the flow so it doesn't get into a concentrated flow. To but if, if you go, Jimmy, if you could go on the map to where the lot opens up uh, to the, I guess it'd be to the south. Okay, so that swale starts inside the lot. Yes. Okay, so what what's happening with all this water? Because typically we want water control so there's no increased runoff. We're not, I, I didn't hear what your question was. The question was, is there increased runoff? No, we're not increasing runoff because it's an, it's an existing situation. We're not changing um, the runoff coefficient factors or anything of that nature. There's an existing water that's already been there. We're just reestablishing this well to and, and adding an additional uh, check dams and other measures to prevent scour and better regulate that flow coming down the hill. As opposed to when initially when the drive, when that swale was constructed, there was, there was no, nothing in that swale to allow that water to be regulated coming down the hill. 
Russ, you know, you know what I'm worried about is just think, you know, the, the runoff is, you know, it's runoff created on this lot, whether it's existing or not, it's still got to be controlled. Well, what, what, what are you seeing that may need well, to be I, done? Maybe a detention basin at the top of that swale? I don't know. I'm thinking. I don't know. I, I, You're you know, not I the know. engineer. I know. Well, I mean, I, I, from, but the thing is, you normally do with a detention basin in something, if you're uh, increasing flow, but we're not, in, we're not in a situation where we're increasing flow. We're reestablishing the existing wood driveway that was there. I mean, it, it would be kind of hard to, we don't really have a lot of room to put anything in terms of a uh, detention basin of that nature at, in that strip um, where the driveway coming up the hill. Before. Mark, you got a lot of room there. <laughs> well, not at the bottom, not near the bottom. No, no, yeah, I but, agree, uh, but Rob's talking about the top where the yeah. swale begins, there's going to be water running towards it. And what I'm hearing you say is it's going to see, be the same water running towards it. The construction isn't going to increase runoff because the house is, Jimmy, if you could show the house is way away from there. Yeah. And, and any drainage from the house, it's all flat. It's, it's a totally flat field on top of a hill. It's amazing. It's right at the, right at the peak, as everybody could see. 700 feet um you can see they're right at the crest but it's a large flat area um but okay i i guess rob i, I he had, i guess he addressed it or if not well, you know i i guess i guess my question is on along that swale couldn't you do like you know, long detention runs of, you know, like deep in the swale and fill it with stone to just retain some of the water. I mean, I don't know what the groundwater situation is along that driveway. If it's, you know, if it's good soil, if it's, you know, high groundwater, but, you know, if there's any way to control that, even if it is an existing situation, we are, it seems like we are adding a little bit to it. Well, I mean, Oh, I, I think I understand what you're trying to say, Rob, but I, I, you know, we're, we're trying to go, you know, we're not, I'm not trying to, we're not changing, you know, I mean, if this was a brand new driveway and this was a brand new site, you know, all uh, woods and all that, of course, things would be, I would we certainly would be looking into doing some sort of detention of some or minute, uh, smaller retention system on top, but, you know, this is already an established um, driveway that was installed. Um, yeah, I, I got to say, Rob, that driveway is in good shape okay. until you get to near What's the, the bottom. And the bottom, there's a, there's a quagmire down there. There was water running on the road because they had open holes that were filling with water and then going out to the road, causing an icing problem. Um, the driveway, after you get up about a couple hundred feet, there's no scouring. No. Um, it was in good shape. It's just the bottom part that they're proposing to redo. Okay. If that helps you. Okay. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Right. Any other questions? I'll look for a motion to approve. Sierra, you're still sitting in for Rob. You want to make a motion to approve? Oh, I am? Okay. Uh, yeah. Motion to approve as a regulated activity. Do we have a second? Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank Sorry, you. Who is the to come. Thank you very much. Yeah, Russ. Russ who, who, who second that? I thought I heard somebody say I. I didn't hear. I didn't hear. Okay. Who seconded I'll, it? I'll second it. John seconded John. it. Okay. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Welcome to town and good luck. Thank you very thank much. You. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Patrick. <clears throat> so I'm going to keep Sierra on because we did all these site walks and Stacy Bevins, 36 Mallory Road, single family dwelling. Uh, 
another family moving to town, been in town. Stacy's been in town a long time. Uh, Tess, Tessa is a beautiful pregnant woman, and that's what we like in Roxbury. <laughs> so welcome to them. Uh, this is a proposal for a new home off of Mallory. The existing driveway has been there for a long time. Um, and Sierra and I looked at it, and there's no wetland issues whatsoever <clears throat> with the whole plan. It's a well-done plan. Who did this? Uh, Brian? Uh, yeah, I did that. Yeah, okay. But it's a well, well thought out. Um, I have no issues. Sierra, did you? Did I what? Did you have any issues, any comments on this? No, it looked like it was pretty clear. Okay. You want to make a motion? Anybody have any questions? No. Bye. No? Jack, any questions? <laughs> Sierra, <laughs> you want to make a motion? Yeah. Motion to approve as a regulated activity. Would it be regulated? I don't it's think a, it is any... regulated, isn't it? Brian, there's nothing within 100 feet, right? That's correct. It should, should be non-regulated. Yeah. Oh, non-regulated. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I have a motion to approve as a non-regulated activity. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. What's next? Okay, we're, we're on the new business, but before I go to new business, I want to go back to the wetland enforcement officer report. And it should have probably said, there's a notice of violation that we need to address tonight. So what I asked John to do going forward is to provide us a uh, wetland officer report every month just telling us what he approved uh, as non-regulated so we all know. So when we see things, we, we know it's in there. Um, so, so you can see that John's approving a lot of generators. <laughs> <laughs> They're still, still doing it, huh, John? This has been going on for years, no? It's amazing. I think that in pools. I mean, if you don't have a generator or a pool, you don't belong in Roxbury. <laughs> well, I, I, I went to Crestwood where I bought my pool, just looking to buy a part. And I saw there's a two year backlog on pools. But Same I thought thing. the generator thing went, went away, but I guess not. I that's guess that's why you can't get an electrician. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are all backlog generators, I bet. <laughs> yeah, I bet. All right. So, John, a couple of months ago, is there a second page on this? Because we should have had that on the agenda NOV to discuss the NOV, but we could do it under this. Is there a second page? Okay, let me start off by apologizing. I was stuck on a 730 meeting schedule. No, no apology. Just don't worry about it. Is there a second page about the okay. NOV? No, Chris, I didn't include Chris, that. The NOV is, is, should be up there if Jimmy can find it. Yeah, the NOV was issued in January. But it, it, it's on the, uh, it was posted. Okay. Jimmy, I think it might be before John's report. Yeah, it's coming. I'll be right there. <laughs> okay, thank you. There we go. Sorry. Okay, so there's a notice of violation, and that's what I would like to discuss first with P Peter. Um apparently there's a dam in the brook. It has some pipes in it. Not really sure what it's there for. From what I understand, it's there to get a tractor across, but there's better ways to do it than this. We issued a notice of violation. We talked to Peter via email because um, he was in South Africa, I believe, John. Yeah, I'm on the, I'm on this, I'm at this meeting. Just Thank uh, you, Peter. But, Thank yeah. you. Welcome. So, John, was it, um, were you in South Africa, Peter, or yeah, somewhere? East, east and South Africa, you know, I. 
Right. So Peter wasn't really able to respond other than to say he would take care of it when he got back in March. And I'm glad to see he's on the call. John decided to, and I decided to give him till March since it's been there for a while. Nobody ever noticed it. So, John, you, you want to give me a play by play on how we even knew about this and and what happened? Okay. Um, well, first off, I, I went over uh, um, Joe Carranza. We we're having some conversations about property there in his stream. And in that area, you could see, since I was in the area, I was able to see the dam there. Um, along with that, when I was discussing issues with the state, um, a Jacqueline Sidek reached out to me saying that uh, Dennis McDonald had made a complaint also about And where's dam. Jacqueline from? She's from Deep. DEP, Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Okay. Yes, Jacqueline correct. got a hold of you and said, had a complaint against who? Uh, against basically us from Dennis McDonald stating that the, uh, I, the Wetlands Commission was inactive on that. Um, obviously, the NOV was already issued. His uh, email was sent to them in February, on February 16th, uh, making that allegation. Uh, she called, I talked to her, I said, well, we're, we have it, we're active on it. The homeowner is in Africa, so we are, we're, we're in communication. We've been emailing back and forth. So we were granting him plenty of time to come back and we could resolve this issue at that now, once he's back in town. All right, um, did Dennis McDonald ever notify the town of his concern? Negative. Uh, Patrick's on the call. Patrick, first selectman, who's an ex officiato member. Patrick, were you notified by Mr. McDonald that that he had an issue with how we we're handling the NOV? No, no, they, we, uh, they did not. OK, thank you. So what was Deep's conclusion on his on his uh, complaint? It wasn't against me. It was against the commission. Because he likes uh, to complain about me, and I'm all I'm all for it. <laughs> oh, I, I feel like <laughs> complain all day. No, no, his complaint was basically: I talked to her for at length on the phone, and I have emails going back. She sent me all of his emails and her correspondence going back and forth. He basically made the allegation that the town is neglecting this and it was complete inaction. Um, I, I told her our our situation, where we were. She completely agreed, and she said that um, since it is in our jurisdiction and it is in our hands and we are being active on it, that they're just going to dismiss it and not even pay any attention to it. So it is now, it's our ball. What, like wasn't it Darcy who wrote that email? Who, no, who that runs Jamie Sidorak. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, she's very pleasant. So they, be, they concluded the commission's doing its job. Is that correct? Yeah, the whole nine yards. They said we have it under control, and it's in our jurisdiction, and they really – didn't see any any part of it. Okay, and then there was a complaint to the DOT, or how how did the DOT get involved? Oh, uh, that's a different topic. Dennis has nothing to do with that one. Okay, it has nothing to do with the NOV. It didn't get in. No, the, the NOV department was of trans. Okay. Yep. Okay, then Peter, thank you for being here. We we are a very uh, open to people who cooperate with the Wetland Commission. I, I read I read your things that you submitted today to the town. Uh, there's a misunderstanding on your part that um, you claim the town never notified you that um, you needed a permit, but that's like the town notifying you that if you sell stock, you need to pay taxes, which when you sell stock, nobody tells you that you're going to have to pay taxes until April. And then you say, oh, oh darn. Well, there's what there's environmental regulations in Connecticut that are very unique to Connecticut. Um, the, the other states, it's regulated by the state and it's much more uh, bigger projects that require a permit. But Connecticut uh, writes the regulations the Department of Environment of Energy and the Environmental Protection, we call them DEEP. They write the regulations and then commissions who are volunteers such as us here who volunteer our time, we administer it. We don't write the regulations, but 
We accept applications. As you can see tonight, we talk about them. If there's a violation, uh, then we issue a notice of violation, which is a way to say, hey, you screwed up. Let's work this out. If you decide not to work it out, then we issue you a cease and desist, which then gets more legal. We don't like them. It takes more of our time. It's going to cost you more money. Um, and, th and then we get deep DEP involved, and then they take enforcement action. And we all go to court if we can't come to a conclusion. Obviously, this situation here doesn't rise, in my opinion, doesn't rise to that level at all. You put this, this crossing in that has pipes, and it requires a permit, whether you're, you were notified or not, doesn't matter. It's, it was your responsibility to get a permit from the town, not the town's responsibility when you moved here to educate you on every possible permit that you need. Believe me, if you build anything, you need about five different permits, even if it's a shed. And, and those are town regulations, but wetland regulations are state control. So I'm going to hand the floor over for you, but for everybody on the call, that this is, um, we, 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 Mr. Caranta was concerned about the erosion of a stream on his property. I thought his, I thought his concern was upstream. I went and looked upstream. I didn't see anything upstream. It's a stream. We had a three inch storm, then a two inch storm and streams flood and streams erode. That's what they do. But he had a concern. And when John went out to talk to him about it, this is when John saw this dam there. Uh, and that's how this all began. So, Peter, why don't you go ahead and uh, talk to me about a bridge too far? Yeah. Um, so thank, thanks for uh, giving me the floor. Um, yeah. Can I, can I go to can I share my screen? I believe I can do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jim, Jimmy has to do that, has to allow you that. Go ahead, Jim. Can you help me share my screen? Do you want to show us that video? Is that it? No, no. I, I, well, there's more, there's, more, well, there's more issues at work here. I, I, I'm not disputing the, um, the structure that went in there, but I, I need to explain some other stuff that is affecting my lot. And uh, this is a appropriate forum, I believe, for that. Absolutely. So, so if I can do that, um, you know, maybe we, okay, here, PowerPoint, open. Uh, just uh, apologize for that, share. Oh no, cancel. This one, share. Hmm. I had it up there a second ago. Uh, I made you a co-host. If you click uh, share screen down okay. at the bottom of the screen, you can. Uh, okay. Share. Yeah. Share. Yep. There you are. Uh, maybe not. Uh, it's not coming up. Uh, I could use some help if you could get me to just share my screen. Uh, uh, you, there should be just a, share, a green share screen button. Yeah. Click that and it should take over. Uh -huh. I don't know what you're seeing on yours end. But um, it should pop up a window to let you pick what you want to share. Hmm. Peter, never mind. We really don't have time. We have many other things oh, on the agenda. Well, it's a long meeting. Well, so, well, no, is... hold on. Let me say this. Jim, go ahead and put up his uh, presentation. Okay. If, if you want to, is it the video you're trying to show us? No, no, it's not. It's, it's the erosion. The erosion is a fairly serious problem. This, this just demonstrates well, that. Well, let me explain how this works. No, no, wait, wait a minute. Uh, give, me a, give me the floor for a second. Okay, I mean, go ahead. I mean, I'm listening to you guys, so just give me, give no, me a... No, go ahead. The floor is yours. Okay, can we go back to the beginning? Um, 
I just, I'm, I just, okay. So this, this is, I, I presume you've read some of this. Um, I read it all. My, yes. my comment, my comment was that I'm, I lived in a condominium for the longest time, so I don't have a lot of experience with wetlands. But I, I do apologize for the violation. By the way, I didn't get the letter that that was you put up notice of violation. I did go to the post office, and they didn't have anything to give me. So if you go to the next, um, next John, do you know where that went? This is important. Uh yeah, Russ, I sent it to his house. I sent it certified. Uh, I have the green tag. Um, I have everything. Yeah, dude. So, so it was no. delivered. No, oh, sir? No, 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 no. I was away and I checked all the mail and I went to the post office yesterday and there was nothing there for me. Uh, I have the green receipt, so it's, it is moved. Okay. Okay, that's okay, Peter. It's not so, a big deal. You're here. That's what's important. Okay, so this just to not to argue the point, but this structure has pipes that doesn't allow any damn water to build up. I just want to make that point. Can we go to the next page? This is the this is the pipe from the road, which is acts like a nozzle. Okay, it's important to notice this because when there's a storm, this pushes water at a very high velocity into my yard. Okay, um, and if if you just this is on Route 199, Peter. Yeah. 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 And, it's, it's... And so, so let's just keep going and, and I'll get to the point I want to show you. You'll see here that it's undercut the bank on the south side of the stream almost five feet. You can see it's six. So my son's helping me there. You can it, see is, almost... this, is this on the road you're doing this? This is in my yard now. Oh, there's, now we're on your property. Okay. It's on important property, to know where we are. Yep. On the south side of the stream. It's undercut the bank by 63 inches. So if you step on top of that, you have a chance of collapsing into the, into the stream. If you measure the tree line from, from that bank, it's about 83 inches. So, it, so we're about two feet from a major tree collapsing into my yard because of the, under, because of the force by that nozzle, which is a pipe that pushes into my yard. If you okay. keep going, yeah if you keep going the next page you see that the force of the water has undercut under there that already collapsed by itself and created that what apparently looks like a dam but it, but that's just the bank you know the water goes from side to side undercut that that collapsed and and um and so on so my, the, if you go to the next slide you'll see that's the bridge that's the old bridge across the yard and the center shows where the rivets of that bridge have been sheared or the screws. And, and I've had to put new screws because that, that bridge is ready to collapse. I also put legs on it in order to stabilize it. Mm, uh, I those, see those, that. That needed a permit. That and that's, permit. that's part of your problem. Well, well <laughs> I mean, I had to get it to the other side of my stream. That, so I, I acknowledge that I didn't get a permit. So that bridge, that bridge has been there for many, many years. It, uh, I, I bought the house uh, with the bridge there. Okay, because so. there there was never a permit issued for that bridge, but that's that's not an issue. Go okay, ahead. Next, next, next page. Next. Uh, this is the video. We can hear that. The video is not active because this is a PDF. Uh, but anyway, you can hear that it's like a torrent when when the when the water is okay. When the storm's on, you can it's just like a river. It's not really a stream. It, it is a river. It's a stream. No, it's it, a stream. In my mind, is something that trickles along. This this is going at force. I mean, it's it's cutting under the ground. Uh, all right. Are you a hydrologist or geologist? I'm a physicist and I'm okay. also a medical. So, so I, I wouldn't dare tell you what to do with physics, yeah. that's for sure. Because you're yeah. smarter than I am. But um, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, no. I'm um, the, the reason, Peter, let me explain, and maybe you'll get it, maybe you won't. A lot of people don't understand. I, I, I am a geologist, hydrogeologist, John is, and everybody on this commission has served on this commission, Rob, Sue, and Andy, for decades, decades we've served together. And then we have new members, Sierra, Olivia, and Lenora, who, who um, just on. But, and we've been doing this a long time. 
So it is a stream. It goes, it goes up a ways. The state has the uh, right to dump water into the stream. There's a state statute that gives the DOT to the right to, to put water from the roads into a stream. Right, John? DOT did go out and look at it, uh, looked yes, at the area, looked at the area where, where the pipe comes in, determined there was no erosion where their pipe comes in, and that they have the right to discharge water into streams and properties before the houses were built. And the houses, your house, Caranta's house, were built, that this pipe has been in there for decades since 199 was put in. The town also has one catch basin at the beginning of Judge Bridge Road that also discharges into the stream. And the town has a has a right, has a what's called a grandfathered easement to discharge water. And if the if the legislature didn't give towns and state that right, where would we put the water? I mean, really, I mean, wow. the, the natural place for it to go is the stream. When it rains heavy, Peter, you got to let me talk and not interrupt me. When it rains heavy and we, we're not getting more water every year, we're getting it more intense. So we have more intense storms. But over the year, the amount of water, the amount of rain, which averages 45 to 50 inches a year, that's not really changing. It's what's changing is we're getting 25 to 50 year storms. We're getting what should be once every 25 years, once every three years. And last year, we got two of those. So when it rains, streams flood. When streams flood, and it has nothing to do with the road. The, the road is a very minor amount of the total drainage coming from the total drainage basin of that stream. And every time you get a, a 25 year old year old storm, what do streams do? They erode from the beginning of time. Streams erode. That's why there's what's called the Mississippi Delta, because the Mississippi River is flooded for decades and centuries and they create deltas. So your stream is not doing anything different than any stream is doing. And it's nobody's fault but Mother Nature. If you can find a way to sue Mother Nature, let me know. Well, I'm, but I'm, there is no way. So what, this is what happens. People like you come to the town and you say that, you know, I have this problem. I want to solve it. Great. You could solve it by hiring an engineer to put together a plan to, to fix it so the erosion is not so intense People on Church Street have done this. People on Painter Hill Road. People all over town. I've been chairman 30 years now on this commissioner, 27 something. And people always come to us. My, my pond is filled up with silt. It's in the stream and the silt's from the road. And we took a position as a wetland commission that if you're going to have a pond in a stream and it fills up with silt, that's what happens. You have to clean it out, not the town. So if you want to fix this, the way to fix it is to get an engineer to help you design something. Your bridge is totally part of the problem. It has its footings right in the stream bed, which is, is what's causing water to back up. Then you build, you don't call it a dam, but it's a dam. It, it's backing water up. And that when you do that, when you start uh, causing water to back up, it, that water wiggles and it causes those banks to erode. And that, that may be part of the Corantus problem. I don't know, because I'm not going to make that call. That's for somebody to hire an engineer and say why this is happening. I could tell you that 80. 95% of why it's happening is nature. It's what it is. People who buy houses next to streams got to know that. So the best way out of this, Peter, is this is what I'm going to recommend to the commission. Remove that dam immediately. We'll give you 30 days to remove the dam. It's definitely a hindrance to that stream and needed a permit. 
If you want a crossing, submit a permit to have a crossing. That's your right, but you need a permit. And you need a bridge that's designed by an engineer so this stuff doesn't happen. Um, and that's basically the way I see it, but I want to hear from other commission members on what they feel and uh, if they think I'm wrong on this or I'm right or whatever. I would like other commission members to talk. Mr. Chairman, this is Joe Coranta. Because I was Joe, Joe, mute Joe, please. Mute Joe. Thank you, Joe. You, you don't just step in to a meeting. This is not a public hearing. This is a, a discussion on a notice of violation. You, you claim you didn't, uh, you, you weren't the complainant, so fine. Uh, but let us do our job. We've heard you before. And we will do our job without being interrupted. I, so, I, so I'm commission, not, I would interrupt. like to hear from commission members on this. Russ, I totally agree with your recommendations. Yeah, I'm on board with it too. I think that's exactly right. Same here, Russ, I agree. Um, Russ, the only thing I have to say is if he purchased, <clears throat> sorry, purchased the house with the bridge, um, where does that stand? Well, I mean, it looks like an old bridge. So obviously Peter didn't build it. So the so whoever owned it before probably built it and nobody saw it. Or, it, you know, maybe I got to go back 30 years. <laughs> um, the bridge looks Larrabee's old. Larrabee's owned that house a long time. <laughs> who who owned Peter? Um, no, owned Larrabee's owned that house for probably 40 years. So the bridge may predate wetlands reckon. Uh, um, regulation. Well, I looking at the bridge, I think it needs to be removed because if it's not removed, it's going to next next three inch storm. It's coming down. Yeah, it's, it's the structurally not sound. Yeah, yeah, the supports the way they're put in. It, it's not within any engineering. Uh, it has no engineering value whatsoever. So I, I, I think I no, tend to agree, Andy, that may, the bridge should come down and the dam should come down and permits should be submitted for putting in a crossing. You don't need two crossings, number one. If you want to get your tractor over there, do a crossing that you could get your tractor over there. They have many pre-built bridges. You just lay it on uh, forms. It's, it's not complicated. And it would be a better situation for you. Yeah. Um, as far as anything with the pine tree that's going to crash down on your house, uh, we, we could approve that now. I mean, you could cut that tree if, it, if it's a danger. That's called the maintenance exemption. And you could cut that tree. As far as I think I read... You wanted to take out evasives. Uh, we welcome that, but that requires a plan. That requires what evasives? Where are they? And what are you going to do after you take them out? Let, let, let them come back? Because if you just take them out and not plant something there, then they're going to come back. Okay. Can I just, just say something? Yeah. Uh, uh, hold on. I want the commission to speak first. Anybody else? So what I'm hearing is the bridge should go too. Well, well, am, and I, am uh, I wrong in that, Olivia? Um, I mean, it depends. I feel like the definitely the um, supports should go on the bridge. I I can't hear you. Is it me? I feel like the supports should go, like the two pieces of wood that he put up to help the bridge stand up. I feel like those should go. Yeah, but if you take those down, the bridge is coming down. Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. give them more time to take the bridge out. Yeah, or maybe like fix the under like no, under can't. layer so it's like there's more no, support in that. No, yeah. Yeah, I think the bridge is an issue mainly because it is probably at risk of coming down. And if that does come down and get buried in, uh, in the stream and the mud, that's going to be a real pain in the neck to uh, to clean yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's also collecting debris there around those supports, so that that's just going to you know generate more of a problem if you know if that really it could dam up there too over time. Yeah, 
I also Lenora, think that... Lenora, what do you feel? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, my microphone works. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey. Well, I have two computers and one microphone doesn't work and this camera's going bad. Um, I mean, I agree with everybody, but he he's probably, I mean, if he takes down the bridge, the cost and everything being that he wasn't the original person that put it there, is there anything we could do to, I don't know, to kind of. I don't know. I'm hearing Andy say that somebody Peter's owned it for Peter. You just moved to town. No, no, no. I didn't say Peter owned it. I said previous owners. uh, Oh, okay. And it predated the wetlands. Right, right. So we're not, we're not, we're not going after Peter for something he didn't do. Right. With the brick. Well, one thing Peter could do is have an engineer look at the bridge and give a recommendation on how to secure it properly and get those get those supports out of the stream bed. Yeah, I, I do need to be able to get across and, until- no, We, we until hear I you, Pierre. Let until, us let us have our moment together as a commission. Okay. And then you're gonna have more than enough time to, we, 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 we are more than respectful of property owner rights. Let me tell you, we're one of the best commissions in the state for that. But we do have regulations, we, state regulations we have to uphold, so. You can't you can't have a bridge that's needs maintenance and try to fix it yourself and cause more more damage to the stream. Is there anybody else? Rob, do you have any comment on this? Well, I don't think we I don't think it's fair to to make him take the bridge down. Okay, install it. I do think he should remove the dam. But I also think that, you know, as a civil matter, if it does cause problems downstream, you know, he's as a property owner, he's responsible for it so that maybe it would behoove him to take it down. But I don't think we could force him to take it down. What, the bridge? Yeah. Well, we can, but we don't want to do that. That's not right. We don't. No, that's what I'm saying. but but, But there's two things I want to do. I want to make sure the bridge is safe for him. So I'd like him to have an engineer give him an idea of how to fix it and maybe even make it wider. So he only needs one crossing because he has the other crossing to get a tractor across. And that crossing doesn't do that for him. Uh, Number two, I need we need to fix we need to protect the stream. And this isn't protecting the stream that dam. We can make them remove it. It's definitely something that's causing harm to the environment and to the stream and to the stream water quality, not to mention what it's probably doing to the upstream bank. Um, so anybody else have want to speak uh, from the commission? Russ. Yes, Sue. Um, so... I have a question though. Well, kind of something that sometimes I think we need to point out to people. I have not familiar with this, haven't seen this, but when he's talking about the undercut that's taking place and that he is claiming that it's the pipe from the road. But I also think that landowners, the commission needs to stress to landowners that are fortunate enough to have stream going through their property that the natural um, way is for them through water flow as long as things aren't um, you know being introduced like a higher volume of water that that's how, what streams do that they change their course over time right and that property owners, it seems that a lot of times property owners get, and I'm not saying him in particular, but that property owners get caught up on the fact that they want to manage that meandering Mm -hmm. and you shouldn't be managing that meandering. Now, if there's a situation where because of water is um, unfortunately from a pipe or whatever misdirected and there's a high volume, then that does create an issue. Otherwise, um, you know, that that's something that needs to be left alone. When you buy a piece of property, that's part of what you're buying. I totally agree with you, Sue. Mm-hmm. I couldn't have sent it better. But they have a right to submit a permit for whatever they want to do. And then it's our job as a commission 
whether that's the right thing to do or not. Now, you know, Sue, on Church Street, we have huge problems on Church Street with that stream flooding, taking bridges out and everybody's built walls along it. And it's it's it, it, the house has been there for for centuries. So that's a hard situation. They're in a floodplain. Uh, but these houses are fairly, you know, 30, 40 years old. Um, I couldn't agree with you more about streams meander. That's their natural thing. If it's not harming property or life, it's not going to cause your pool to fall in or your whatever. And it's in the woods. Then I, I I'm totally opposed to trying to harness a stream. But they have a right to submit an application. They do. We yeah, can't I agree. Stop that. yeah. Yeah. And I agree. And if he wants to, I think the, the prudent thing would be to, well, first of all, it has to remove that piping and has to have that looked at. And I, and I think the second thing is, is, you know, he bought a piece of property with a bridge existing on it, but now being enlightened with the situation is to how can he make it better and coming, you know, uh, forward with a better plan. Right. Okay. Peter, you're on. Okay. Um, so just to understand, I, I'll, I've got 30 days to remove the existing. The Do you need more that. time, Peter? What's fair for you? I think um, I'll do my best effort. I'm, I need to go to London on the 19th of April and I'll be there for two weeks and then I'll come back. So maybe the middle of May, but I'll, I'll work to get it out as soon as possible. The other thing is that new bridge needs to be, uh, the, the old bridge, legacy bridge needs to be redone uh, and I'll submit a permit. Um, and, and it's arguable as to whether that is the best location for the replacement or somewhere else. So um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I had the same idea, Peter. Yeah. So get an engineer and you're going to, you're going to fix your problem. And then one more thing I, yeah. I have seen, seeing is I've noticed the situation with that pipe from the road. I've looked at other, you know, it, uh, other locations within Roxbury and also in, in different towns, and they have a much wider pipe. Now, it's not so easy to replace this with, but, you know, if you use like a 48 inch or, a, or an even larger pipe under the road, it won't create this nozzle effect that, that shoots. I, I, Peter, I agree, but it's a state pipe and we, we have no jurisdiction over what DOT does and DOT determine there's no problem on their end. So they're out of it now. They, yeah. they, the town has no jurisdiction over the pipe that goes under a state road. A bigger pipe would be a good idea in a lot of cases because of the type of rainfall that we've been dealing with for the past five to seven years, I'd say. But we have no jurisdiction over the state. So you could go to DOT uh, and ask DOT to put a bigger pipe in, but I guarantee you it's going to be, they'll run you in circles. Yeah, it's a yeah. bureaucracy. And then, okay. And then the final okay. thing, I'll, I'll need to cut that tree down before it collapses. John could approve that on the spot. So John, why don't you make a, a date with Peter, look at the tree and give him approval to cut it down. I, I have and no and use... And use the non-regulated form, the inquiry form. We need to make sure we document everything we approve. Okay. No problem at all. all right. Peter, if you want to reach out to me tomorrow, I'll be in the office in the morning. But I would just like to say that I do have the certified receipt that he was served with the NOV to clear that. That's all right. He showed up. He, he talked to us. He cooperated with us. Um, I recommend that we, once the, once the dam is taken out, we, we take off the NOV. We give them to the end of May to do that. So by the May meeting, it should be done. And we'll lift the NOV. Should we, should we be talking of fine? I don't think so. No. Not yeah, I don't think so, Russ. I don't think so either. I have to ask Me that either. question. I don't think so either. I, because he cooperated. Yeah. If he didn't cooperate, it if we do a thousand dollars a day for however long. Um, but Peter cooperated. Um, and and I want to thank you, Peter, 
So right. if you could get that dam out of there, get us a plan for the bridge. If you want to do landscaping, you know, remove evasives across there, then we need a plan that needs a permit. Put it all in the same thing. In the meantime, John, will get a hold of you to uh, to look at the tree and, and give you approval if it meets what we call maintenance requirements, which it probably does if it's leaning. Yeah. So, yeah. Russ, are we saying that this is the timeline on this? Again, can you tell me, because I missed it, that by the May meeting then? That yeah, this? by the May meeting. Okay. That, that he needs to remove the dam. It, it's up to him to submit a permit to fix the bridge. That's up to mm -hmm. him. Um, he doesn't have to do that. Obviously, he's going to have to do it sooner or later. Um. John, but but that's not part of the violation. The violation is what we're calling the dam. I'm just I'm just a note for John. I'm going to be a dentist in the morning, so after eleven would if you want to stop by after eleven, um, that's when I'll be back. You you're cut off, John. You hit your non mute button. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. yeah, Peter, just reach out to me. Give me a call when you get back to the house, and I'll be more than happy to run over. Does he have your number? Uh, you have his number? It's right on the town website. You just look it up. It, it, it's okay. Simple. Peter, you got that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Peter. Yeah. All right. We'll move on to new business. Uh, I can drop off, right? Yes. Thank you very much. Joe Caranta, did, did you need to say something? Yeah, thanks, Russ. Thanks for the yeah. opportunity just to chime in here a little bit. I just want to um, say um, there were some really great comments by some of the commission members. I don't see your name here. Susan Finch. That was amazing. That was exactly what people need to understand. Meredith and I, we, we really cherish our wetlands. And, um, you know, when all of this started with the erosion of our piece of stream, we were super upset. But I just wanted to clarify a couple of things. Um, we, we did contact DOT because the road, uh, Route 199, was repaved and all of the drainage implements were uh, repaired, replaced. Um, potentially may have they may have added some and so uh, we did get some paperwork from the uh, state of Connecticut saying that they had uh, prior to 1970 um, filed for uh, an easement for the right to discharge onto our land and that exists um, they, so they have the right to put the water onto our property, but what they don't have the right to do is in, increase the flow beyond the original approval. And so that's still to so, be So Joe, process. this issue's for DOT, not the Roxbury Wetland Commission, right? Well, well, let me let me finish. So well, Joe, the reason is we got a long agenda. I'll, and, I'll take and, and I'll give you two, two minutes. And, I'll let you go. and and I'd like it to be Roxbury so, wetland related. So, so what DOT, I would like we have no jurisdiction. Joe, I'm trying to talk here. We have no jurisdiction over DOT. DEEP is the ones that that approve DOT permits. It's in our regulations. We have no I, no right right. We have okay, no. So let me finish. no. All so right, so now that you understand the state everybody component wants of this, to go Mr. Eat. Chairman, so yeah, now that you ahead. understand the state component of this, Roxbury does not have the right to discharge. And so I would like to charge this committee with looking into any additional drainage that has been installed into the brook and increased flow and velocity. Because like Suzanne Finch said, um, we have to cherish our brooks. We have to understand that they meander. We have to understand that they act the way that they act right but what we what we we don't have to accept is the increase in flow and velocity from drainage right and so i checked with peter holbert he does not have any paperwork on the right to discharge onto our property i'm not i'm i don't have a problem with that okay but what i've asked and i've asked the town several times now is if while you have one of your engineers out on another job okay if they can come down and they can do a, a downstream analysis from the drainage implementation that's been installed 
to determine whether or not it has caused this significant erosion. Because we've been here for 15 plus years, we've never had a problem until the road was rebuilt and then the additional drainage was installed. So that's all I'm, I wanted to add. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you, Joe. Any commission members have any comments to that? Look, it's a legal issue. Uh, I, he's saying the town doesn't have a right to discharge water onto his property. I have no idea. I, I was, I've looked into this before, not with Joe, but with a lot of people who complain about town water going onto their property. And I was told that we were grandfathered. This is really an issue for the town attorney. And I'll leave, since Pat Roy's on this call, I'll leave it up to Pat to look at that legal issue that Joe is bringing up because it is not an issue for the Inland Wetlands Commission, number one. Number two, the Inland Wetlands Commission is not gonna hire engineers to look at town drainage <coughs> or anything else. It's up to a homeowner or any person who makes a complaint to provide us with the evidence. It is not our job to get the evidence. Um, it is our job when somebody complains about somebody to, um, to, to ask questions and things like that. And uh, we could go forward with asking questions with the town, but the town needs time to get a lawyer involved, I think. It's up to Pat how he wants to handle what Joe's saying. Because if what Joe's saying is true, that means the town can't be discharging water anywhere. And we got to block all our culverts and flood our streets. And I can't believe that what Joe's telling me is true. But he, he made the statement. Uh, Pat Roy is on the phone. So, Pat, I'm going to leave that to you. And unless anybody on the commission feels that the commission should do more than that, then let me know because we are a commission. Well, is it on town property? Even? Well, is what on town property? It's not town property, though, right? It's just one homeowner against another homeowner, right? It's not town property. No, no, the stream, the, the, the stream goes through many homeowner properties, but obviously right, the but state, it's not, like, you know, like Garnet Road, Sierra, you know, when you drive down Garnet Road and you see those big pipes crossing the road, that water is going on to people's properties. Correct, but it's you know it it sounds like what it's Joe's saying. What Joe's saying owners. is we don't have a right to do that. That's what Joe's saying. No, so it's a legal issue, not a wetlands issue, in my opinion. Unless yeah, somebody it sounds disagrees. like it would be more of a residential dispute rather than an inland wetlands. No, right? Joe but, Joe doesn't have a dispute with his neighbor over this. His dispute is he claims the state and the town has increased flow onto his property because we're putting water into a stream that flows on his property. The mm -hmm. DOT is regulated by DEEP. It's in our regulations. We, we cannot regulate DOT. We can't issue them notice of violations. Uh, we, we have no jurisdiction when it comes to the state. Our jurisdiction only is with the town issues. We do have jurisdiction over the town like the town has to get permits from us when they're going to change out culverts and things like that. So oh, okay. what, Joe, Joe, what Joe's statement is. I thought he was he, saying the adjoining property was the water was coming no, from that. Oh, no, okay. Joe, Joe's okay. not blaming okay. his neighbor. He's blaming the state and he's blaming the town. Oh, okay. And Got he's it. claiming we don't have the right to do what we're doing. So Pat needs to hire a lawyer, unfortunately, yep. and pay some money uh, to have that. <laughs> Fed it out with Gail McTaggart. It's not Joe, a, it's, uh, Russ. Russ, you can have me on record that uh, she's on vacation now. Uh, it'll be in her notes when she returns. Okay, thanks, Pat. And I'm actually it. here, Russ. It's Meredith. Um, I want to clear up something. So the culverts are coming from the state and Roxbury that are dumping into the top of the basin off of Judd's Bridge. 
Now the velocity in the water has changed, which has not caused a minimal erosion. I'm talking significant erosion to the banks where it's actually- Meredith, the DOT disagrees with you on that and you need to pick it up. No, this isn't a meeting on this. We need to move on. Well, if you care about- We need to move on. I gave Joe his time. Please mute Then you'll care about that. Please mute, mute. Thank you. This is yeah, not. Say, this isn't on the agenda, Russ. So we. Need this to isn't on the agenda. This is not. This discussion be, should be had with the first selectman, and with the DOT. The Wetland Commission has nothing to do with any culvert. The culvert that the DOT is much larger. The, the town's put minimal water. It's one catch basin. Uh, but but that's all going to have to get hashed out between the town and your lawyers and our lawyers, because we got to figure out who's got the right to do what. And I think we've talked about it enough. So I'd like to go on to new business. Excuse um, me. I don't excuse is Jamie, me. Is Jamie, is Jamie current? Is, hello? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Um, I thought somebody wanted to add on the agenda. Karen, remember? Yes. Um, somebody yes. came in late. Yeah. Um, yeah, Brian, no, Rusko. Brian Neff submitted uh, Rusco at 158 Painter Hill, uh, and that should be done probably at the end. It needs to be voted on. I, I'm just making sure uh, that Jamie, okay. Yeah, I'm here. So I'm is here. there only one? Uh, there, were, there were two new business, uh, Curran and Swanson. And then this one for Rusco. Yep. Okay. So I only need to add on one at, at the end of this. That's correct. Right. Okay. So we'll go on to Jamie Curran, <clears throat> another family that's lived in Roxbury, building a house, had a baby. How's the baby, Jamie? He's good. How old now? Uh, five, five and a half months. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. So that's, that's three, three families in one night. Look at that. We're on a roll here. Yeah. And, and Russ, I'm stepping down on this one. Yeah, John's going to step down. I'm going to put Rob back on. And so, Sierra, you're going to stay on, okay? I'm here. Okay. All right. We did approve a driveway a while ago. Um, so now this is for the house, Jamie? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought we approved the house too. I did too, but I guess not. Okay. So Brian, <laughs> yeah, are you I think on we all this? thought so, but we walked the site yeah, yeah. though, um, Russ, remember? Yeah, you guys walked the site. Yeah, we did, but I yeah, and I thought we approved the house, but you're right. Okay. So Brian, there's no wetlands, right? No, no wetlands. The footing drain is going to um it's going down gradient towards the driveway, which might nothing might come out of it. It's very sandy, gravelly, dry soil there, so there might not be anything that even comes out of the footing drain. And the roof drains? None. Uh, no roof drains. Uh, no, no gutters. No gutters. Uh, smart. I wish I didn't have gutters. <laughs> I, I don't see any issue with this. Anybody? Anybody have questions? Anybody want to make a motion? I'll move to approve this as a non-regulated activity. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. Thank you. Next. I'm back well, on. Paul Swanson, 31 Holmes Road, drive and culvert crossing of intermittent stream. I, Rob, didn't we look at this like ages ago? Russ, yes, I think we, you and yes. I looked at this. Yeah, no, I looked, me and you, I looked, Andy. I looked at it also. And we had a lot of, a lot of concerns about it. Well, I think the, the biggest, I, as I remember, we were wondering why the house couldn't be built on the road side of the stream versus doing a stream crossing. Right. And then where the driveway enters, the drainage seemed to be lacking. But I see they're going to put in a culvert. Is there an engineer here for this? Yeah, I drew up the plan. It's oh, Brian. hi, Brian. <clears throat> yeah, why does the house have to cross the stream? I'm also here, Russ, Paul. 
Hi, Paul. Hi. Just in terms of siting, it seems, it looks like that the area between the house and the water course is very shallow to ledge. Whereas on the other side of the water course, we did some test holes for septic and we got down seven feet with no ledge. So it seemed to be deeper, better well built, well drained soil on the other side of the little water course. Um, so it seemed to be a better site in terms of drainage considerations and also blasting and things of that sort in terms of excavation. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah, now I remember all the outcrops. Yep. I think it was a winter when we were there, Andy. Yeah, two it was. Two winters ago, maybe. Yeah, I was just uh, like two months past having knee surgery, too. I was really nervous on that walk. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. All right, Brian, we'll, we'll, uh, who wants to go look at it? Well, I'll go, Russ. Who's that? Lenora? Lenora, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll go again. I'll, I'll, me and Lenora will take a walk. Okay. Paul, that's standard. We, we can't approve a regulated activity in the first meeting. Yeah, no, understood. Understood. Okay. I'll make sure. It's, uh, I'll just put a flag where that crossing is. Yeah. And could you just stake where one stake where the house is going to be so yep. we could. Okay. And that's it. And uh, Lenora and I will go out in a week or two. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Hey, Russ. Yes. I just have a question too on this is, is for the intermittent water course for the other property, does that turn into a bigger wetland area too? It does, but there's a home there. Um, yeah, I, we, we saw that. Okay. I just we saw that. Um, the, there's a, there's a big house on that property next door. Yeah. So it's not like it's all woods, but they're not, they're not affecting the wetlands or anything, but um, it, it's not like it's going into a wooded area. Okay. All right. What's next? Is this where we need, we add Neil Rusko on? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I think this is for a driveway, right? Yes, driveway, it is. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll look for a motion to add Neil Rusko on for a driveway construction on 158 Painter Hill Road in Roxbury. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Is Neil here? Uh, I don't think Neil's on the uh, on the uh, the meeting, but I can answer any questions about this. Okay. Tell him I said hello. Out. It's been a long time. Neil, Neil's a great guy. Yeah, he lives right next door to this property. Right. He bought this from his neighbors. He put two old subdivision lots together and had the wetlands flagged out, topography done. So um, he'd like to be able to put a driveway into a potential house site kind of up on top of the hill. So we figured out a way to do this without crossing wetlands or water courses. And it follows some pretty natural topography up to the top. So um, I think it, it works pretty well on this site. It's, it's kind of a difficult site, but I think the fact that he put two lots together made it a lot easier in terms of finding a single driveway access. And he just wants to do the driveway now, not the house? That's correct. He wants to do the driveway first because he's not sure what he wants to build for a house, um, but he's got to get access to the top where the house would be, which actually would be outside of regulated area for the house itself. But close. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Me and Lenora will go look at this then since we'll be yeah. out and about. I know where it is. Yeah, it's right next to Neil's house. Okay. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Yep. Is there anything else, Karen? Uh, not that I know of. Okay. I, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Good meeting, everybody. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Talk to you all soon.
Good night. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Night.